can see it if you'd like to. Turn to 567 till the storm passes by. First and last verse. 567 till the storm passes by.
Ephesians chapter 5. I can read three verses of Scripture, verse 9, 10, and 11. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 9 through 11. Ephesians 5, 9, a little leaven, leaven of the whole one. I have promised you, through the Lord, that ye will be none otherwise minded, but that he that told you shall bear this judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the cause, uh, uh, then is the cause, uh, we got here. And read again. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you be in the message tonight, Father. We ask for you to help us. I pray, Father, that you guess what you want us to say. Lord, let's say, well, lay aside all the weights no matter the mind or heart. Just give it over to you. Be empty now, Father, that you can tell us the Holy Spirit. Father, have you wait tonight? I shall not pray. Amen. As I was looking at this message tonight, the title of this night is Offended by the Opportunity to Live. Offended by the Opportunity to Live. I thought about the election. I'm a big political, okay? But I thought about the election. A lot of people are not unhappy with the outcome of the election. A lot of people are offended with the way the election went. Had it went the other way, there would be a lot of people offended with the way the election went. Some people see the election as an opportunity for our country. Some people say the way it turned out as a demise for our country. So there's a lot of opinions about the election. A lot of people are out in the streets marching against uh, uh, the election. A lot of campuses, there's a lot of fundamentals uh, on the campuses. A lot of people are saying a lot of things about the election. So there's a lot of offense to people the way the election went. But here the Apostle Paul begins writing to the Galatian church. First of all, Paul had been called the Lord Jesus Christ being an apostle. So in the first two chapters of the book of Galatians, Paul establishes the apostleship, establishes authority. In the last four uh, chapters of the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul deals with problems within the church. Well, you see, at this time, there were Judaizers coming on the scene and began to teach some Paul's doctrine. They were beginning to try to mix law and grace together. And Jesus Christ had taught that uh, he had not had come to do away with the law, but he had come to fulfill the law. So the law was not affecting what we're going to be passing the law into grace. But these Judaizers were offended because many uh, people will be saying now the Gentiles, of which we are Gentiles, are out of pain as far as they're concerned, as you're concerned, uh, the heathens, as far as you're concerned this time, many people will be converted to Christianity. These Judaizers who themselves have been uh, converted at one time to Christianity, that I see we're getting to a big small place in, were unhappy. Because they were not required to, the Gentiles were not being required to be circumcised. So they were offended by the fact that they were not following the law or the custom and tradition. They were offended by the fact that the, they were being brought into the church. They were unhappy because no longer did they dictate how things were going to be, but Jesus Christ's word had dictated how things were going to be. So they were offended. We are living in a world today of people that are offended by something. Practically everyone today is in some way or some fashion, at some point in life, you have been offended with something that's happened in your life, or something happened to you in your life. You've been offended. But the question is, how have we as Christians responded to that offense? How have we responded to the offense that it's committed, or we perceive it that sometimes it's not offense, it's something we perceive as being offense. But here in Approximately AD 50, the Apostle Paul began to write to the church, the third missionary church, a journey he has had to church, and now he's beginning to write to this church, trying to correct the errors of 
this church. And believe me, there are times in our nation today when we need to have some errors corrected in our church and in our nation. It's the battle. Because we see a lot of things happening today which is contrary to the Word of God. We see a lot of people today who are uh, not living the Lord, they are Christians, but they're not living like Christians. And we see a lot of things happening today, a lot of things that are happening in society today. But there are three things we'd like to uh, point out to you tonight in, in this message. First of all, there are those who are offended by our lives. There are today those who are offended by our lives. Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 18, if the world hate you, uh, if the world hate you, you know that it hate me before it hated you. When we look at the Bible, when Christ was here, he said he came to seek and save the lost. He did not come to the coffee king. He did not come to the hero to deliver him from the cruel body of the Roman Empire. He did not come to sit at this time to set up the earth for the kingdom. So he did not come to the fashion they perceived he should come. He did not do what they perceived he should do. So many were offended by the Lord Jesus Christ. And many hated him because of his teaching, because of what he taught. And Christ said, you know, if the world hate me, the world's going to hate you because you're a Christian. We need to take note tonight that listen, we're not a popular crowd in the world today. We are a minority in the world today. We are a peculiar people, the Bible says today. And the world, the most part, most of the people, the majority of the people in the world today hate Christians. They hate the life that we live because it shows them that what they are. In verse 11, Paul said, And I, brethren, if I preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then this is the offense of the cross. <coughs> Paul talked about a mystery here. He's saying, listen, I'm caught between two. If I preach circumcision, you criticize me. If I preach you don't have to be circumcised, you criticize me. No matter what I preach, I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to be criticized. I don't want people to take offense of what I preach. And is that the way it is today? No matter what Christians preach, no matter how they strongly preach the Bible, how wrong they uh, preach the Jesus Christ and crucified, the world is offended today by our lives. No matter how loving and kind and considering you are when you go out in the world, there's going to be someone that's going to criticize you. No matter how much you do for the uh, people out there, there's going to be someone that's going to criticize you because the world makes a fist of you and your life because you are identified as a Christian. And we need that through our head and in our mind that we are going to be uh, efficient to the world. The majority of the world are going to be efficient because we are Christians. So Paul says that here, I, I don't miss you. I don't understand. Why? I'm here trying to preach the gospel. I'm trying to get people saved. I'm trying to get people to live right. I'm trying to get people to do the right thing. But yet I'm criticized. I'm persecuted. Paul knew all about persecution. He'd been beaten a number of times. He had been shipwrecked a number of times. He had been stoned and for dead. All kinds of things had been happening to, to, to uh, Apostle Paul. So he knew all about persecution. And he said, I'm being persecuted. He said, you know, he's saying here, it's a fish to me. Why? When I preach the cross, why is such a fence to people? When I preach Jesus Christ and approach my I preach that cross, why is it so offensive? And today, when you stand and try to witness to people, when you try to invite people to church, when you try to tell about people about the love of God, why? Why are we so offensive to the world? Why do people take such offense to it? Why will people all listen when we talk about Christ and crucified? We talk about how John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that gave his only God's Son, that who shall live should not perish but have everlasting life. But yet people today do not want to hear. Many people today do not want to hear. It's offensive to them. They don't want to hear the scripture. So the life we live in a Christian is offensive to the world. We need to remember that. The world. They want to go out and talk to anybody they want to talk. They want to hide in their filthy language. They want to have their filthy jokes. They want to go out and do the drugs or alcohol. They want to go out and have abortion on the man. They want to go out there and, and have babies that are ready to be born, have a, uh, a, a, an 
history is directly into their skull, and I've never had the brain set that old. And if you've never seen a, a video on that, well, you need to if you uh, think, well, oh, okay, but anyhow, it's uh, getting a little side dive better. They think you go out and live in more life the way they want to. That's the works of today. So it's no wonder that when the world, the condition of the world is for greater, uh, St. Paul, St. 13, if our people which are called with God's name will turn and hear us in our nation to be saved, and God can come and hear a man. But my friend, we'll never see a hand of our land until this day, until people repent of sin and turn back to God. So if more I can always say we'll continue uh, as long as it goes on in our land. So it no wonders today that people reject Christ and the life that we live in. The Jews here were rejecting the word teaching of the uh, Galatian church. They were infiltrating the, the, the Corinthian church, or pardon me, Galatian church. You see, Paul's right here and used some baking terms. He said, a little leaven put in the dough is going to make it rise. A little leaven put in the dough is going to corrupt it. And remember, leaven many times is uh, a symbol of sinner and sin. So today we look at what Paul said here. He said this, church, a little leaven can be ejected. And a little leaven in the church can corrupt and defile the whole church. You see, the devil can be in a creep in. The devil can so suddenly ease his way into our church, or any church for that matter, and the devil can get in, and the little leaven he predicts in can ruin or corrupt my whole church. Think of leaven is this. A little bit of egg is not noticed until it begins to work and react and work and react. And the dog begins to swell and tough up and get bigger and bigger and bigger. That's the way it is when we get some in the church that up in for something. A little bit. That little piece we get swell and tough up and can spoil it with the whole church. And pretty soon you know what? It's gone out of all proportion. I know the church, not too far from here, got an all fight one night. They literally threw some, literally threw some books at each other. You know why? Over the color of a car. My time, a feed by the cover of a car being got the fire of the church and who saw us in each other in the church house. A little man can spoil a whole month. So a feast today is going to come and a feast is going to happen in our life. A feast is here and we need to expect it. But what are we going to do with that feast? Christians, we need to look at God's word. We need to look, look God over and see what God has to do when he's done. How we need to bathe and love and cry and take care of that fish. But Paul goes on. He talks about how that uh, the world today is going to hate us Christians. Rather than Islam, <coughs> ISIS will kill you because you're Christian. They're doing it right now in the Middle East. There are hundreds daily being killed because they are Christians. There are many other religions today that want to kill you, do what you? Confucianism, Buddhist, Hindus, Shinto, uh, Shintoism. They all despise you. They despise the life of you. They despise the testimony that you have. They are offended by you because you are a Christian. St. Corinthians 7 16 says, Lord, come out from among them and be yourself. Come in. Listen. We need to be aware of what's going on. We need to be aware of what's happening in our world. And we need to keep ourselves separated from these things. We need to look to the Lord Jesus Christ, our leader, the author of the We need to look to Him and Him and Him along with this. Because many people are offended. They're coming against us. They're offended the life we live. And they're upset. They want to go all they can to tire us down and destroy us. Let me say it here. You and I do not fit in this world. Did you hear me? We do not fit into the world that we live in. We are in the minority. But the Bible says of Abraham, he lived for a city which had good or made of it, uh, which is God. The Bible says this world is not my home. Heaven is my home because I'm a Christian. And I do not get in this world because I'm a Christian and by help of God to the best of my ability, I'm going to stand for God when He's a Christian. So we need to be on God. Every 
gave her name of her life. The world, though, in context is saying, you can form, but we won't get rid of it. You can form, but we won't get rid of it. This is happening on the job. It's happening in schools today. It's happening all over the places we go to today. The world's saying, you're out of here. You don't perform, you got it. But listen, I got news for you. The battle is raging, but we have the victory as Christians. The world may be offended in my life, it may be offended by your life, but we have the victory in Jesus Christ, and one day we're going to leave here and go to our final world to the world where we do get in, and that's it. Yes, the world will be in our life. Secondly, the world is offended by the light. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Think about it. If we go to a fire room here and shut the door, it's going to be pitch black. Because no one there, right? No one there. In a fire room. It's going to be pitch black. But if you go in there and flip on the light, it's going to be revealed to what's in that room. Everything in that room is going to be revealed by the light. Listen to me. That's one thing strong in the world today. The world, men love to walk in darkness rather than in the light. Men's hearts are evil, corrupt, vile, deceitful. Well, when the light, Jesus Christ, comes in, that corruption, that evil, that violence is revealed. So the world is offended the light of Jesus Christ. They don't want to come in because they don't want to be reminded how sinful and how awful and wicked they are. They want to hear it. But when we as Christians preach Jesus Christ, when we sing a song about Jesus Christ, when we tell our friends there about Jesus Christ, when we witness the lost, we're showing them that light. But yet, they don't want to see it. Many people most people don't want to see it. You see, the Jews hated Jesus for what, he did, for what he did. He came in, he destroyed the system, the rituals, and so forth. He destroyed it, he put an end to it. He brought in grace. So they didn't want him to do it. They exposed him for their sin. He told them they were as white scepters. He exposed them for what they were. Many people today are offended by Christians going into politics. I'm not getting rid of them, okay? But that's the question. Because you're a Christian, have you given up your right as an American citizen? Because you're a Christian, have you given up your right to participate in politics? What today, I wonder today, if we had all Christians in our public office, what kind of world it would be today? If we had Christians that love the Lord of God's Word and try to gather up on God's Word, think about how much better our world, our society would be today. What a better world we live in today. But yet, many people are feeding the light. They don't want the light in politics. You know why? Because so many politicians are corrupt. They don't want the light. Either. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 4 3, you said, love thy neighbor. I can hear you now how much I love you. And I do. But I can stand here all night and I'll wait for it next week, next year, and tell you how much I love you. But my friend, if I don't demonstrate it, you begin to walk. <coughs> if you never see anything in my life that demonstrates to you that I love you, you're going to want it. But Jesus said to men to love your neighbor. When the light comes in, when the light shows you the love of God and you portray that love of God to your neighbors, then people are going to see what you are. They're going to see what kind of life you're living. They're going to see that light and maybe, just maybe, you come in contact with someone who wants to have Christianity in their life. Maybe they want to have that light in their life. So now when the light comes in, the last one he you protect that love for your neighbor. In verse 6 of Galatians 5, the Bible says this, For Jesus Christ did circumcision of any anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. 
You see, when Christ comes in, when we put our faith, faith and trust in Him, when we're saved, that love's going to, that love is going to be portrayed in the Paul's telling the, the Judaizers here, listen, it's not circumcision, it's not uncircumcision. It's not that, but it's the faith you have in Christ that protects or rejects out the faith. The love that you have is going to be put forth and people want to see Christ living in your life. People want to see the light that's living in you. John 12, 35 says, Work while you have the light. Work while you have the light. I don't know when. I don't know if it'll be today, tomorrow, next week, next year, a hundred years from now. One day the light is going to end this world. You see, the rapture is going to take place. And there will be no more chance for people to say. Listen. One day, that light is going to cease to shine upon the lost people. So it's come upon us to take out this light to the world, to take this light to the lost, to take this light to those who need Jesus Christ, that they might be saved today before that turn into money. Again, I'm not a part of this world. I've lived my life in this world the best I can by Christ Jesus. I'm trying to Christ help to project that light. My friend, I've come time when time we know we know because Christ comes to take his shirt off. Thirdly, the revenge is to believe a lie. Second Corinthians 2 11 says this, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. The revenge for your life. The revenge for your life. The revenge of the life. They reject him in the strongest terms. I don't have to tell you about the crowd out in Hollywood. I don't have to tell you about these, all these things going on today which are anti-Christ, anti-God. I don't have to tell you know about it. I wonder in my mind tonight, has God already sent them a the strong delusion that they'll never see, they'll never understand that it'd be saved. In Genesis, God got to a point where He said, My spirit will not always strive for me. And I wonder for many people in the world who have rejected and been a fiend of the light, who have been a fiend of Christianity, I wonder for many about the men of if they have been sent a strong delusion that they will never be saved. Think about it. Think about it. They've gone so far. They've been so weak. That they'll never be saved. They'll die and go to hell. In verse 9 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, there is a warning. There Paul gives a warning about believing the devil, about lying wounds. How hard it is today to get a person saved. In fact, it's a rare thing if you've got someone in Carter County and woke up to start calling them that you find a lost person in Carter County. Of course. According to God's word, they're not saved. But according to him, it's a rare thing if you walk up to somebody and ask for a and say no. There are a chance for that person to be saved. The person will de de deny the fact they're lost and on the way to the devil's hell. When the Bible says they're not living right, they're not doing right. Listen, I'm not judging. But I'll tell you one thing. The Bible says we'd be fruit inspectors. For those people who deny the fact that they'd be saved, they're good enough the way they are. They never accept Christ as a person saved, yet they're good enough. They're going to find a way to go to hell. They're going to find a way to get back. My friend, listen. They're filled with strong delusions. The devil is on the scene today. The devil is uh, getting people to be offended at 
Christians and the Lord Jesus Christ. He made a fence uh, uh, against Christians. You don't have to take my word for it. Look around. Perhaps you know someone personally who has never been saved. If you ask them, are you okay? With are you saved? Are you Christian? Maybe you personally know somebody. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul again talks about the apostasy, about the perilous times. Many people today, I've heard Pastor talk about this, many people he knows also. Many people are preachers. They once stood the poor and preached the word, preached red hot against hell and sin. Are no longer in pulpit, they have turned back on the glorious gospel in Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the last day there will be people that will turn their back on Christ, turn their back on God. The Bible says in the last day there will be perilous time. And if we have ever seen perilous time, I believe today we're living in the midst of perilous times. Just look at the newscast tonight. You go or tomorrow. We're living in perilous times. The end times are here. They're upon us. When I was attending TSU, I had a swimming class. The swimming instructor never got the water. He had a long pole. He reached across the way I told him he could pull it out. Never got the water. You know why? He used that hole because a drowning person will try to get a hold of you. Now, I'll probably pull you under, they'll try to grab you in one again, then they can drown you. It's not really that safe to confront someone else, get behind you, trying to save one that's drowning. About the only way you can pull But that swim stuff and instructor knew that they would find him, they would do whatever to try to save himself. So he used that long pole. To pull them out of the other trip. But they were living in a time of drowning people. We're living in a time when people are drowning. We need to be a long pole, reach out and pull in before they drown and slow. There are untold beings, that's what they of people in the world today. They're unsaved. Muslims are not going to go to hell. Buddhists are not going to go to hell. Hindus are not going to go to hell. All these other false traditions are not going to go to hell because they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They don't believe in the light. And as long as they stick to their God and believe their beliefs, they are not going to go to hell according to God. But my question now is this. Why should many people, so many people be offended by the cross? Why should so many people be offended by our lives as Christians? Why should so many people be offended by the life of Jesus Christ? Why should so many people Believe a lie today. One reason. Satan is real. Satan's on the scene. And Satan is doing his best to destroy and hire your name. But my friend, listen to my summation. This is not the end. Because we as Christians, the victory's already ours. This world may be against you. This world may give you a hard time. This world may do many things to you. But I know in whom I have believed, I know uh, all states. So I know I'm good news. I'm a hand news. And as long as I am on you, stay true to God. A fish may come, but it will never destroy us. It will never tire us down because God on our side. 
I love you now. I hope you too. I hope when a fish comes your way, it will. If it has not been, a fish will come your way. I hope that you remember it's Satan trying to show you and turn you down. Father, we thank you for all your sin tonight. I pray that the Lord somehow, somewhere, I've been a help sin tonight. That Father, somehow, somewhere, has been blessed. But Father, I pray that when a fence comes, this is my church name, the Lord, that you watch over here for me, you'll see me and be with me. In Christ's name, amen.